welcome to the European Space Agency, ESA. This is the Robotic Learning Centre, and I'm here to help you find out more about Newton's three laws of motion. Maybe you've heard of Newton before. He is the scientist who got hit on the head with an apple. At that time, he was studying motion, trying to understand the concepts behind it and how they relate to things we experience in everyday life. When Newton recovered, he realised something important. He already knew that an object accelerates only when a force acts on it. Therefore, if the apple were moving, it could only accelerate if there was a force acting on it. He called this force gravity, and to this day we measure all forces, including gravity, in Newtons. Newton came up with three laws of motion, laws that describe how forces and objects relate to each other. To help you out, I've asked some friends in Barcelona, Dublin and Erlangen to demonstrate the laws. I've also asked astronauts on board the International Space Station to help us. That's the ISS for short. So we're going to hear from Pedro Duque and Alexander Caleri. On board the ISS, gravity has very little effect, so everything there is almost weightless. Hi, Pedro. That's a nice smile you've got there, Pedro. Not much is happening. The ball is just hanging there in midair. Pedro blows on it and it moves because of the force of his breath. Now the ball is moving again, except this time Alexander has stopped it with his hand. And this time, nice move. Pedro changes the ball's direction by applying a force. What you've been seeing are illustrations of Newton's first law of motion. This states that every object in motion or at rest remains in that state unless an unbalanced force is applied to it. The state of motion is the speed and also the direction. The two combined, speed and direction, are what we call velocity. An object at rest has a velocity of zero and it stays at rest unless acted on by a force. We call this tendency inertia. Here you can see Pedro applying a force to the ball. He is changing the ball's direction, therefore changing its velocity. In the second experiment, you see Alexander stopping the ball. Here he's changing the speed, therefore he's changing its velocity. The rate of change of velocity is called acceleration. Let's see what our schools have to show us. Pushing the skateboard, that's a force, isn't it? The skateboard moves, hits the pillar and changes direction. But the apple keeps going. That's because this time the force is only applied to the skateboard and not the apple. That's why eating in space isn't easy. The spoon stops, but the food keeps going. Ooh, that looks nasty. And that's why we use seat belts. <laughs> if we were in a weightless environment like the ISS, then he would continue to move. But on Earth, gravity pulls him back down. Okay, here we go again. That looks really messy. That's why we have to use lids on takeaway coffee. Thanks, girls. Good trick. I'm sure I don't have to say, don't try this at home. Looks like she's getting her teacher in to help. That apple's not going anywhere. I mentioned objects at rest, didn't I? In these experiments, the apple, the pencil, and the girl on roller blades are not moving. They're at rest because the forces acting on them are in balance with each other. But when the support is removed, the force of gravity, now unbalanced, pulls them to the ground. 
Without the force of gravity, they would just stay afloat. Just like on board the ISS. So, that's Newton's first law. An object at rest stays at rest unless acted on by a force. And an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by a force.